Hi, and welcome to this week's strategy session. I'm Stephen Gunyan, and joining me now from Cape Town is Asif Mohammed. He's Chief Investment Officer at Aon Investment Management. Asif, thanks for joining us today. We're talking strategy, and of course, as the year progresses, it looks like there is a bit of caution entering these markets. We have improving uh, growth uh, globally, risks of inflation and interest rates also rising, though. In light of all that, how are you adapting your strategy for this year? Um, what's happening is that the interest rates uh, looks like um, the market is pricing interest rate increases. However, in the U.S. it's only pricing interest rates increase for early next year sometime. Um, I am of the view that it potentially might not happen as early as next year. It might happen later in the year. In the case of South African Reserve Bank, they've signaled now uh, rates are going to be flat. However, if the rand strengthens further, uh, they might be forced to cut uh, but that is an, possibly an outside chance. Um, uh, rates, uh, I don't think that the South African Reserve Bank will increase rates this year. Uh, they, in fact, won't try and preempt the Fed. They'd probably rather follow the Fed in the USA. So they might, once the Fed in the US has started increasing rates, they might then start to increase rates. How are we positioned for this year? Uh, you know, global equities on a 4P of about 12 times. And uh, that's not too expensive. Um, it's probably on fair value. And we believe that the South African equity market is also sitting on a forward PV of about five, 12 times. So we would be overweight equities this year. Uh, more specifically, we would be positioned. We like the resources, specifically dollar commodity prices. Uh, however, the RAND might be strong for, for, for the balance of this year. Um, so we would be on weight or slightly underweight resources with a higher exposure to, 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 to gold, specifically gold shares at this point in time. If the RAND does weaken, it's a bonus for us and hopefully we'll get that performance coming through in terms of the higher exposure to RAND edges. Well, in the absence of a weakening RAND, uh, and just looking at the inflation outlook for South Africa, would you be steering clear of the bond market? Would you perhaps be looking at inflation-linked bonds in South Africa? Um, yes, uh, because of the, the, the carry coming through potentially later in the year, inflation ticking up uh, towards the end of the year, uh, we would have an exposure to inflation linked bonds um, in, in, in the current environment. However, nominal bonds also, um, because it's uptick uptick uh, recently, um, it's also starting to offer value uh, if you compare that uh, relative to, to, to global bonds. Uh, we think that uh, the local nominal bonds have been overdone a bit. Um, they're expecting um, inflation to potentially increase a bit sharply towards the end of the, end of the year. We're not too concerned that inflation will, um, um, will, will increase. We do recognize that and the oil price is a, quite a bit higher. It's reaching nearly $100. Uh, global food price is also increasing. So inf there will be pressure on inflation. Um, but we, we think that's already priced in by the market, especially the bond market. Well, Steve, we've already seen a bit of a switch out of retailers this week, uh, some of that going into the resources space. Would you be steering clear of retailers? Is there still some value in that portfolio? What sort of percentage would you be underweight retailers, overweight re retailers, or neutral at this stage? Yeah. Uh, we're currently positioned for underweight retail position, and we have been underweight for some time now. Uh, but however, we along, all along we've retained an exposure specifically to ShopRite, Spa, and Woolworths. And the reason um, ShopRite specifically because it's exposed to the lower end of the market. And we'll maintain that position um, uh, with the exposure to ShopRite. And the reason why is that um, at, at the lower end of the market, and if uh, the Saab, for some other reason, which I think is unlikely, increases interest rates early uh, you know, this year or early next year, um, then what the ShopRite consumers aren't as much affected as, let's say, pick and pay consumers because they ha they're hardly indebted, they don't have, hardly have any mortgage bonds, they're the low end consumer, they rely on, on, on government grants and that's still in place and they will benefit from an inflation increase in, in, in government grants. So we would still be exposed to a, a, a counter like ShopRite um, at this point in time. I do recognize that, that valuations are a bit um, steamy at this point in time, um, but with the lower interest rates, it should um, help consumer confidence and boost consumer spending. Well, Woolworths valuation is a little bit lower than those for ShopRite or for Spar. We had some numbers out of Woolworths yesterday. Does this back up your investment thesis for that group? 
Yeah, the, the, re the, the sales increase has been um, eight percent. Um, it's been a reasonable increase in in a, in a, in a, in a fairly flat uh, inflation scenario. To um, inflation, I think, has been um, for most of the retailers um, at the store level anything from one or two percent because of the the strong ran. Uh, Woolworths imports also uh, they've been benefiting from that. Um, so uh, and it's not going to give you a significant or exceptional growth, but it's going to give you a reasonable growth going forward. Just in that resources space, some fund managers are pricing in 40% earnings growth for some of the big resources companies this year. Do you think that's a bit optimistic? What are you counting on there? No, no, that's definitely optimistic. I think 40% is too high. My indications are that the resources companies this year uh, they are going to increase um, earnings by about tw by 29 percent, uh, in fact, um, and, and that they might surprise in the upside, and that's slightly upside, but might, you might end up at 35 percent up. However, what you've got to do is mar equity markets discount earnings a year to two years ahead, so we've got to look at the earnings growth for the next year, for, for in two years' time, and that's about seven or eight percent. However, our view is that with if commodities stay buoyant, which we think in dollar terms, uh, commodity shares um, the will um, the analysts will have to start increasing uh, the second year earnings growth from about eight or eight percent to maybe fifteen percent, um, and that would support valuations on the uh, resources shares. We've already had a bit of a taste of what the numbers are going to look like from Anglo-American with those trading updates from Anglo, Plant and Kumba. BHP Billiton also with a production report yesterday. Perhaps starting with Anglo-American, uh, we'd also want to know more about that full year dividend when they do report back, which will be sometime in February or March. Uh, which is your favorite between those two? Uh, current favorite is Anglo-American PLC uh, because of its exposure to base metals, more specifically copper. Uh, copper price has been um, close to a record high, um, and that should benefit Anglo a bit more than, than BHP. Um, on the other hand, BHP would also be benefiting from the higher um, oil price. Um, also, they would be benefiting from the higher iron and oil price from Australia. I don't think the rains in Queensland has had a big negative impact on them. I think that's probably a temporary phenomenon and that will be sorted out in the next couple of months, and they should resume uh, product, not record level productions, but fairly high levels of production. And, and China and India will still be good um, sources of, of demand for them, and it should, uh, should bode for well for, 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 for global miners. I see if we've seen that rand weakening above seven rand against the dollar, and some saying it could strengthen back below that level. If you were going to be taking money offshore at this stage, uh, what percentage of your portfolio would you be investing offshore, and uh, what would you be investing it in? Uh, in terms of prudential um, guidelines, they've just the government has just recently they're intending to increase it, or they have increased it uh, to 35 percent. Um, what I would do is uh, take most of the the money offshore um, as much as we can, and the reason why is because on a purchasing power of parity basis, uh, the rand is roughly overvalued by 20 percent. I'm not saying that the rand to tomorrow will depreciate um, by 20 percent. Uh, normally these things take about a year or two to, to, to come through. Um, so the RAND is overvalued on a purchasing power of parity basis. However, on a short term basis, um, we gather that the Reserve, South African Reserve Bank has been buying, uh, has been accelerating their purchases of, of foreign currency, most likely dollars, and they have been increasing it to roughly, on average, $200 million a day. Um, I'm just a bit concerned when that stops, um, the RAND will most likely appreciate again, and it might give us another buying opportunity to then um, you know, take more RANDs offshore if you have the capacity to do that. I see if we have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your insights today.